All right, let's see what's up with this chef. Woohoo! Dry. Damn. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what the f is that? I feel like a Williamsburg hippie with the beanie that looks like a saggy testicle in the background, like a character out of Fraggle Rock, but we're gonna be unboxing some fragrances by a perfumer that a lot of y'all rock with. Ever heard of Layton? Layton Exclusive? Altair? Percival? Sedley? Pacific Rock Moss? Ton of the Kayali fragrances? Ring a bell? So that perfumer is the homie Hamid. Now a few months back, Hamid and I actually got to meet in person. I gave him his props, cause obviously Layton is one of my favorite fragrances. He knew of me, he watched the content, and not only enjoyed my type of demeanor, but was like, yo, I like when you shit on fragrances and when you give it this comedic flow, like that's really important and it's dope. Which means the world to me from a perfumer. God damn it, respect my craft. So him and his wife collaborated on a fragrance brand, which I have showcased on the channel, making beautiful, light, airy fragrances called Fabrica de la Musa. So he sent me a few of their latest pieces here that we're gonna unbox and check out together. I don't know what to expect. I haven't looked up any notes as of yet, but let's see if we find a hidden gem in this piece. Let's roll my fucking music so we can check out some new releases by the house Fabrica de la Musa. <laughs> Blessing one of my beautiful peoples, you know who it is, it's your boy, C to the U to the B to the A. Shout out to the Fabrica de la Musa team for blessing me with these fragrances. Again, I did not expect it. I wasn't aware that this was gonna be sent to me, but I'm appreciative either way. The original fragrances, they all are completely different and they all encompass kind of this Mediterranean Italy style fragrance. It's bright, it's airy, it's citric, and they were all inspirations by like pictures and experiences that they both shared in like Italian countrysides and inspired by different landscapes and sculptures and shit like that which is cool to hear from the actual perfumer. I don't wanna read it in a fucking article online and be like, oh, this was in fact, I truly don't care. But when you talk to the perfumer and he's giving you this breakdown and shit, and then you're smelling the fragrance, you can visualize what that sensation is. And that's a different experience. That's why kind of those master classes exist and that's pretty dope. Cause as a creator that doesn't give a shit like myself, I just wanna know if the fragrance smells good or not. When you get that different perspective, you appreciate it differently. And that's how I differ from true fragrance reviewers. I'm here for the streets. I'm here for a motherfucker that wants to smell good, exclusive, save a buck, or blow the bag. So these are the three fragrances we're gonna be checking out today. So the first one is Oud Taurej. Probably mispronouncing that one. Ile Bourbon. This better have some booze in it. And Opera Infernal. Burning like the devil. I'm trying out. I'm trying out this bourbon shit first. Like, did you guys even doubt that that wasn't gonna be the first fragrance I was gonna try out? Oh my god. Here's what the presentation looks like. We're gonna definitely look up some notes if it's not listed on here somewhere. Made in Italy. Oh, it has a no break. I fucking love for me. Boom. No breakdowns here. Let me show you what the bottle looks like. Ooh, very nice. Similar presentation, or at least similar cap but these gradient darker tone bottles as the other ones were more on the lighter side because the fragrances were lighter. So I'm anticipating that these shits are gonna be a little bit darker. I don't know, but here are the notes. All right, so the notes start off with chocolate, caramel, clove, Guatemalan cardamom, Madagascar vanilla, and Somalian incense. The fuck is Somalian incense? Bro, if Ja were here, there would be a super racial joke. Edit that shit in, Asnan. All right, so here, what it says, it's a smoky chocolate fragrance, okay? Lost in the Indian Ocean, the scent embarks on a sensory journey through the untouched splendor of the islands hidden in the Indian Ocean, infused with warm spices and it narrates lush aromas and wild landscapes of the island. I'm surprised I was able to read that consistently throughout. Hooked on phonics works for me. All right, let's go ahead and smell this fragrance. I'm gonna give you my honest interpretations. I don't give a flying fuck if the fragrance was sent to me, gifted, whatever the case may be. I'm always gonna keep it a stack, believe it or not. Guess, here we go. Very clove and chocolate. Wow, that is beautiful. Instantly, I can tell that this is gonna be a nice vibe. The clove is very popping. Like right now, we just passed Thanksgiving, so clove is very prevalent. It smells like honey glazed ham clove. And incense, that incense is very different. It smells like those little cone incense joints that they look like the little, uh, well, fucking cone. Cone incense shit. I don't know why I'm trying to make it more complicated. It's a cone incense. Google it if you know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> Spicy, airy, incensey. Very incensey, actually. Now it's converting more to a clovish incense vibe. That's. All right, hold on. So far, it's really fucking nice, but let's see. Atomizer check. Very good distribution, solid atomizer. Who cares? Get out of my face. 
Let me give it a couple seconds for it to dry down before I dig my nose in and I start picking up all the aroma chemicals. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, here we go. I'm not getting much chocolatiness in the air, but let's see what it does on skin. Mm. It feels almost, the incense is kind of like spiritual-ish kind of. There's a clean incense. I've never experienced clean incense. Incense is usually comes with a heavy, deep, smoky action. This is kind of like a clean, cottony, musky incense. It's warm, it would be gorgeous in a candle. You definitely get the vanilla accents. I don't get a ton of chocolate though. I get a lot more incense, vanilla, and clove. This definitely would be a badass candle. On skin, it smells very holiday-ish. There's a lot of transformation and change going on with this fragrance. It's gonna be hard to give it like a true first impressions. I'm gonna have to let a full dry down situation happen with this scent, because you can kind of feel the shifts in the fragrance and what it's trying to do with my skin. But at this top slash early mid section, I'm getting clove, slight cinnamon, and a very clean incense. I don't even know how to describe clean incense. It's smoky, but it's not overwhelming. Like some, just think of like a big puff, a cloud of incensey smoke that could be a little bit jarring and kind of choking. It's just a clean, musky, airy kind of incense that isn't overly aggressive. It's calming and holy-ish. Oh, that vanilla is coming up a little bit more. Maybe it's cho white chocolate-ish kind of vanilla because I am picking up subliminal chocolatey vibes the more that it dries down. That's why it's gonna be hard for me to kind of judge this shit without like full dry down. I think we're gonna have to definitely do that with this one. Confusing, I wish I had some fucking bourbon action. That would have been nice. Yeah, clean, spicy, incense, non-aggressive, definitely leans cold weather, reminds you of the holiday season. It's a very pretty scent that would be a gorgific candle. How is it going to do as a scent, as a fragrance? Let's see what the dry down. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so while that one's drying down, let's go to Opera Infernal. Opera Infernal. All right, let's open up this puppy. Obviously, I'm assuming it's going to be red. Beautiful, gradient red bottle, gold cap. Here's the insignia. And here are the notes, and there's the box. All right, so the notes in this fragrance, ooh. Calabrian bergamot, pineapple, Egyptian geranium, magnolia, Haitian vetiver, and praline. Okay, very interesting notes. Pine pineapple, praline, bergamot, huh? All right. Juicy, jammy, sweet, sexy, very mass appeal. A little bit of fuckboy energy in here with a niche kind of vibe. That's gonna be all the mass appeal. Pulpy, bright, lemoncello-ish. Bitch, what? This motherfucker gotta go on skin. This is nice. That is. Ooh. Ooh, you saw the goose pimples. I don't even gotta. Oh. Sweet, citric, lemoncello, pulpy pineapple, a mild, mild nuttiness that adds a little bit of foundational woody body, not allowing the fragrance to kind of like be overly sweet. This shit is fire. Sexy, uncomplicated though. Like it's uncomplicated and it's kind of fuckboyish, but fuckboy done to like the, to the right energy, to the right temperature. Like this shit is, this is a fucking vibe. The goose pimple, speak it. It's balanced with the right amount of citrus, the right amount of sweetness, the right amount of pulpiness, the right amount of nuttiness, the right amount of woody, the right amount of dry. This is for the dudes transitioning from designer to getting something a little bit more high class because they got their tax return and they're about to go broke anyway. So you know that they're ballers for about 60 to 90 days until they figure out that the check is completely gone and then they broke as fuck again. I don't know what the performance is and this one does not need time to marinate. That is full goose pimples, absolutely a ball spur. That is delicious. Ooh, let's go to the next one. I haven't forgot about Il Bourbon, but it's gotta dry down. It doesn't have the effect that that one does. Let's go to Oud Tarek. All right, here's what that bottle looks like. Gorgeous gradient blue with almost like a light green tint hue on the bottom. And here are the notes. It starts off with Brazilian green mandarin, Nigerian ginger rose taif, Myrrh, Indian Oud, Somalian Incense again, and Gayak Wood. I'm smelling potency. 
don't know, I'm a little scared. Hamid be getting kind of crazy sometimes with these oud fragrances. Late and exclusive, uh, aggressive. So let's see what the fuck he's doing over here. Hopefully he don't get too crazy oud that wifey don't punch him in the throat and be like, yo, get the fuck out of here. Go sleep on the couch there, Charlie. All right, let's see what's up with this shit. <laughs> Dry. Damn. <laughs> That smells like a very, very dry leather. Damn, bro. Made me scratch the dandruff out of my beard. Hey. What the fuck is that? Just do it! Oh, dry. Not too funky, but dry. Dry sweet, dry ginger. Oh, very dry ginger. Did I just come out with like an Asian dialect? Oh, very tragic, like so racist. Oof. I'm gonna go on skin, but god damn. Shit. All right, I'm gonna go easy. This is winter only, and according to me, that is strong, dry vetiver, very vetiver potent. Do I have a cut? That shit kind of burned. Dry, punchy, oody, Incensey, there's a lot of smoke, a lot of dryness. Remember what I said about that clean smoke previously on the Ile or Ilia bourbon? It has that here, but the vetiver and everything else is, whew. Hey, yo, that is aggressive. Performance issues will not be available in this scent. You have to be an oud lover. It has a little bit of that rubbery nuance that some oud fragrances have. It is very potent. It is dry. It is aggressive. It is known to be a Middle Eastern staple. This is definitely for that demographic or for the oud lovers that want a refinement and a non-fecal asshole smelling oud. It doesn't smell like ass. It's a dry one. It's very aggressive, present, ominous, dark. Yet it's trying to recuperate some light and airiness from that ginger. A little bit of a spicy element, a little ting in that scent. That shit is dry as fuck though. I feel it right here, bro. It's slapping the shit. It's like slapping the fuck out of my uvula. If you don't know what uvula is, the little ball that hangs in the back that sometimes you hit when you're go, 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 go. Never mind. Oh, oh, it's, it is getting better though. It, I'm getting a lot of leathery nuances, more suede. Suede nuances. Maybe it's that dry aspect, this dry hide-ish like material. Like I feel like if I go like this too much, I'm gonna fuck up the new buck on the Timberland boot. You know, it definitely has calmed down on the aggressiveness, at least on my skin, but it is still very dry, oody. Smokiness has kind of turned a little bit, but that's still Somalian incense aspect still produces that clean energy. This is definitely for the oud lover. This is definitely catered for that Middle Eastern crowd or oud fanboys. That is potent. All right, let's go back to the ile ile bourbon. Okay, hazelnut-ish. I am finally picking up a little bit of a chocolatey essence. It is a nice scent, but it doesn't drive me crazy. It's just okay. If it had a little bit more of a bourbon accent or a boozy element, a little bit of a scotchy nature, I think it would kind of turn a little bit more into something that maybe is more my taste. For me, clearly, Opera Inferno is going to be not only my favorite, but I think the more mass appealing, I think more people are gonna easily transition into this without it feeling like a challenge. This is definitely seeming to be the strongest one. Dry, clean, smoky, incense oud. And this one is more of like a soft, subliminal chocolatey, but also an extraordinarily clean incense, and one that I've never smelled before. I love y'all mother suckers from the heart. I'll put links in the description. Have you smelled any of these fragrances or any fragrances from Fabrica de la Musa? And if you have, which one is your favorite? Leave it in the comments below. I'll see y'all bitches next time. You know who it is. Biggest in the game. Shit. Smooches. For the fly gun holder, money folder, roller roller, star tag when it's time to call back. For the rough, rugged, and raw way, this nigga Jay, it's a game, but he don't play. Hey, for all the chicks that got dead in the penthouse, sweet on top of my mom's crib. It's long since you never get in. It's long since you would think that you would.